for part two of our classical conditioning notes. Let's um, talk about a pretty important vocabulary term, which is acquisition, kind of very similar to association, but kind of makes sense because in acquisition, it's a stage where association happens. I would just write that down and know that here's kind of the more laid out definition for you. It's the initial stage in classical conditioning during which association between a neutral stimulus and an unconditioned stimulus takes place. So I give you the picture just again from um, the notes from before. This picture of when we ring the bell, give the food, ring the bell, give the food, ring the bell, give the food, and the dog salivates every single time, that is acquisition. So a couple of things about acquisition. The neutral stimulus needs to come before the UCS for conditioning to occur. In most cases, we humans can be a little complicated and make connections between things that other organisms can't really. But for the most part, for your understanding, and I've talked about this in the last set of notes in, the, in part one, the neutral stimulus has to, become, has to come before the UCS. And then the number two, the time between the two stimuli, between the bell and the food, the neutral stimulus and the unconditioned stimulus, it should be half a second. It can't be a half hour, can't be even five minutes, or even 30 seconds. It's gotta be right away in order for the dog or anybody who is being conditioned to make that association easier. Okay, let's talk about extinction. Like when an animal goes extinct, they go away forever. There's no bringing them back, right? It's not always the case with behavior, but when a behavior goes extinct, the response and conditioning goes away, right? So let's, let's put some more academic psychological terms here. When an unconditioned stimulus like food is not presented to the participant or to the subject, like the dog, it does not follow the bell or the conditioned stimulus, then the conditioned response starts to decrease at some point goes to, and at some point goes extinct. So let's say you're one of Pavlov's dogs, okay? They do the bell, the food, the bell, the food, the bell, the food, and the dog is salivating every single time. Well, eventually, and you need to make sure you're hearing me on this and you write this down. Eventually, they need to present only the bell, only the conditioned stimulus in order to know that conditioning has occurred. Make sure you write that down. As Pavlov or whomever is doing the conditioning, we have to know that conditioning has occurred by not presenting the UCS. Of course, we have to ring the bell. If the dog salivates, we know he's conditioned. Great. So we ring the bell only from then on. This chart shows you that here's where acquisition is occurring. Bell food, bell food, bell food, bell food, salivating. And then we don't present the bell. And yay, the dog salivates, he's conditioned. So we keep just doing just the bell, just the bell, just the bell, just the bell, not food. Eventually, the conditioned response will go away and that's called extinction. So when I ring the bell and the dog no longer salivates, the response has gone extinct. He's no longer making that association between the bell and the food. Then we have something called spontaneous recovery, and you see the chart from the last slide, way back here, just repeated. It's the same exact thing, but just extended in order to include spontaneous recovery. After a rest period, so let's say with Pavlov and his dogs, he conditions them, he rings the bell only time after time, and then the behavior, the response goes extinct. He goes home for the day, gets back at it the, morning, the next morning, he rings the bell. So the rest period has occurred. The once extinct response, conditioned response of salivating, spontaneously recovers. The dog salivates again. And if the CS, the bell, the conditioned stimulus, persists alone, it becomes extinct again. Okay, so you'll see in the graph here, we got bell food, bell food, bell food, the dog salivates, woohoo! And then just the bell, just the bell, just the bell, and the response goes extinct. Pavlov goes home for the night and he rings the bell and the dog salivates. And he rings just the bell, just the bell, just the bell. And the response goes extinct really even quicker. 
Let's talk about a couple other vocabulary terms here really quickly. Stimulus, generalization. To generalize, right, is to broaden, right? So it's the tendency to respond to stimuli similar to the condition stimulus, and that's called generalization. Pavlov conditioned the dog's salivation by using miniature vibrations to the thigh. So he did other experiments too. When he subsequently simulated other parts of the dog's body, the salivation dropped. Okay, so they did not generalize. So if they, if he realized, and he's kind of doing, extending his experiment to show you generalization and discrimination. So if I'm someone who was bit by, um, here's a picture of one, a German shepherd, and that I then generalize the stimulus, I become afraid of all dogs, I have generalized the stimulus. That is stimulus generalization. Okay? With Pavlov, his dogs did not really generalize because they only salivated when he stimulated the thigh. So what they did was they discriminated. Not like prejudice, I don't like German Shepherds, right? But di stimulus discrimination is the learned ability to distinguish between a conditioned stimulus and other stimuli that do not signal an unconditioned stimulus. Okay, so um, certain, a certain tone will cause the dog to salivate, like in this picture here. But a different tone will not cause the dog to salivate. Because they used this tone and conditioning and it, it, it went so well that the dog was able to discriminate and say, mm, that's not the tone I've been hearing, so that doesn't make me think of food, therefore I'm not going to salivate. So if I was bitten by a German Shepherd, I'm only afraid of German Shepherds. I am not afraid of like Beethoven, right? Like the St. Bernard or the Chihuahua or the Poodle. I have discriminated the stimuli.